The new HD Zero goggles have many features and capabilities that we've not seen on any other FPV goggle in the past. One of these is a built-in ESP32 chip that allows it to be compatible with the backpack functionality from Express LRS. If you don't know what Express LRS backpack is, it is a wireless protocol that allows your radio to communicate with other parts of the system with a compatible ESP32 on board. This allows you to do things such as change the channel, the power output and band on your radio, and that will also automatically change them on your goggles and video transmitter as well. In this video, I'm going to walk you through what the setup process is to do this on the new HD Zero goggles and actually demonstrate it in use at the end. Just before I get into it, I just want to say if you do find this video useful, please do make sure you are subscribed to the channel. If you'd like to support us to be able to keep making content like this, please do consider checking out the link in the description to my Patreon as well. Also, I just want to say if you want to see the full list of features and capabilities of these goggles, I do have a very long full review on it and there will be a link to that in the description too. Okay, now before we get into setting it up, I just want to explain a bit more about what it all is and how it actually works, as well as what you need to know before starting the setup process. Now, the basics are, as I've said, our HD Zero goggles have a built-in ESP32 that is capable of supporting the Express LRS backpack firmware. Once you've set it all up, you will then basically have a communication link between your radio and your goggles. For instance, if you were to change channel on your radio, so tell it to change VTX channel, your goggles goggles would receive that signal via the ESP Now 32 protocol and change channel. It will also though send that command over the telemetry link to your Express LRS receiver to your flight controller and if your VTX is connected to your flight controller with the VTX MSP protocol it will also update the channel on the VTX as well allowing you to change the channel on the radio and that will then simply automatically change on the goggles and the VTX. There are though some things you need to be aware of. For instance, you need to make sure that you've updated the firmware on your transmitter module before starting this process. I'm not going to be walking you through that in this video today. You will need to specifically make sure that the backpack firmware has been updated. I will put a link to the Express LRS wiki in the description and that will walk you through how to do it. You will also need to update the firmware on your goggles, not only the goggles firmware but also the ESP32 firmware and we will walk you through how to do that today. Day, and you will need to make sure that you have a compatible VTX such as all of the HD0 VTXs that support VTX MSP and you will need to be using the latest version of Betaflight which is 4.4 release candidate 4 at the point of me making this video. This new MSP VTX function is part of the new Betaflight 4.4 release and whilst it may work on earlier 4.4 versions it will not work on version 4.3 times. You will need to be using 4.4 to be able to have the MSP VTX function allowing it to receive that update from the transmitter via your receiver. Okay, now just to walk over the hardware setup, this is a traditional HD0 setup. We have our flight controller with the HD0 VTX connected via power and our UART. There is only one UART connected, there isn't two, there's no smart audio. We simply have our TX and RX going into our flight controller. On this, it's on UART number one. We then have my Express LRS receiver connected on UART number six. Again, typical setup, nothing specific or unusual about it, exactly the same as you would connect it up in your quad. Now, at the point of me making this video, I'm using Betaflight 4.4 Release Candidate 4 with the Release Candidate 4 configurator. It is important that you are using Betaflight version 4.4 because that is the version that has the MSP VTX capability built in, but also the HD OSD stuff as well. So once you flash your flight controller, you're going to need to configure the MSP port. This is actually a little bit different in Betaflight now moving forward, and in some ways is going to be easier. It isn't fully clear how this is going to turn out yet because there is still in my testing some CLI commands that you have to do but it has been improved in the sense you no longer have to do two CLI commands. The way I'm seeing it today, you only have to do one. So if we enter the configurator, we can then apply our custom defaults to my flight controller because I have literally just flashed it. And then we get to the main configuration screen. We're going to go under ports. We're going to make sure that we have UART1 set to MSP, which we do. And I've got my UART6 for my receiver set to serial receiver as well. 
Now, the first big change in Betaflight 4.4 is where you can actually enable the MSP VTX, but also the MSP OSD functionality. And that is now over under the peripherals area over here. So for the UART that I have my VTX connected to, so UART 1 on this, we're going to click down and we're now going to select the option called MSP plus display port under VTX. Once that is selected, we're then going to click save and reboot. Now the flight controller is rebooted, you can see that we still don't have MSP display port. Now, whilst enabling that on the ports tab does configure it for the correct ports, in my tests, you still need to manually enable MSP display port via the CLI. There will probably be a preset for this in the future, but here and now today there isn't. So what we'll do is go back into Betaflight and now enable the MSP display port for the OSD. Now to do this is pretty much exactly the same as it was in the past, but rather than putting two commands, so one to set the port and one to set the MSP display port, we now simply do one command. There will probably end up being a preset for this in the future, but here and now we need to do it via the CLI. So again, we go into the CLI and what we want to do is set the MSP display port to MSP. That is the same command as it was before. This is available in the HD0 instructions. So what you want to do is put that in and then click save. That will reboot the flight controller. And now you should have MSP display port showing OSD on the goggles. So now looking at the screen, you can see that we have the actual battery full showing, which means we do have MSP display port. If I just go into the VTX menu, you can see that's now appeared on the screen. And that way we have the MSP display OSD working. Now, there are a couple of other things you're going to want to do. You're going to want to configure it for HD OSD now because we have that functionality as well. That's going to allow us to have that full width OSD on the display, but also have the improved character set and things like that as well. That's pretty much based on the OSD, not the HD mode. But what the HD mode will do is give us that full widescreen option. So what we're going to do is just quickly hop in and do that. This is fairly straightforward. We simply in the configurator go under OSD and then we want to simply change it from auto to HD click save, and that's now going to allow you to be able to put the OSD elements on that full widescreen on the display. So I've now added some additional elements just to demonstrate this. And if we hop over to the goggles, and now you can see the OSD is going to the extremes at either side, rather than just be in that four by three area in the middle. Now, another configuration you need to do is just make sure that your receiver is working properly. So for instance, if I move my throttle stick, it's working fine. And you're also going to need to make sure that you have the telemetry option here turned on as well. Well, this enables communication between the Express LRS receiver and the flight controller to allow it to actually have the commands for the backpack functionality. So again, we're going to configure that, click save and reboot. And that is then all of the configuration in Betaflight done. Now, the next thing we need to do is update the backpack firmware on the HD0 goggles. As I've said, they have that ESP32 backpack functionality for Express LRS built in, but it actually uses a separate firmware than the main goggles firmware. Now, I will put a link in the description of this video where you can download this. I'm showing you the document that's included with it on the screen at the moment. And what you would then do is take the file that is linked in this document, place that on an SD card, which I'll show you in a minute, and then we'll update the firmware on the goggles and we'll now walk through that process. Once you've downloaded the file, you should have a zip directory called ELRS. What we're going to do then is extract that. That will then give us a folder called ELRS. If we go into that, there's another folder called ELRS. And within that is the firmware files for the backpack functionality. Now, what you need to do is copy this folder called ELRS that contains those four files. So not the folder with the folder in. It needs to be one step up from the files to your SD card that you're going to put in the goggles. So what we're going to do is copy that and paste that folder onto the SD card. Once that's done, what we're simply going to do is just check within that folder is the four files as we've shown earlier. We're then going to place that SD card in our HD0 goggles and power them up and then start the update procedure. Now we've got the HD0 goggles turned on. What we're going to do is navigate down to the firmware menu. From in here, you can see we've got various options. And what we want to do is update the ESP32. So we're going to click on that, click the button, 
and then let it perform the flash process to update the firmware on the goggles for the backpack. This may take a few minutes and is simply a case of waiting for it to complete. Once the update's complete, we can then navigate back up the menu. We want to go to our connections option and make sure that we have our backpack function turned on. And then we can proceed to bind the goggles to our Express LRS transmitter. Now, at this stage, we're ready to bind our goggles with the ESP32 to our Express LRS transmitter. Now, I'm using an external module on this one, but it is exactly the same no matter if you're using an external module or you're using a radio with Express LRS built in. The one thing to note though is whilst I have updated the firmware on the goggles, you do also need to make sure that you have updated the backpack firmware in your radio or module as well. I'm not going to show you doing that in this video because it is going to be different for every radio, but what you will also have need to have done is make sure that the backpack function is updated on the radio before proceeding. As mine already is, what we need to do is bind the two together. Now the process is really straightforward. You need to open the Express LRS app. You then need to go down to bind. You would then select bind on here. And then in the HD zero goggles menu, you would select bind as well. And then the two will connect. So what we're going to do is actually do that binding process. Now mine is actually already linked, but we can do it again. So what I'm gonna do is scroll down to the start backpack binding, click that. We're then gonna click bind in the Express LRS Lua script. And then you can see that it says success. It shows the UID and now the radio and the backpack in the goggles are now connected. Now that they are bound, we can now start to use the Express LRS Lua to control the goggles. So just to demonstrate this, what I'm going to do is go up into VTX Admin. And you can see that we've got the option of setting band, channel and power level. What I'm going to do in a minute is just change the channel. So we're on channel one at the moment. I'm going to select channel two, click send to VTX, change that and you will hear a beep and you can now see that the goggles have changed to channel two. Now, if you have everything configured correctly at this point, you have your flight controller configured with the OSD and that MSP backpack function. When you change the channel here, it will change the channel on the radio and it will change the channel on the VTX as well. So what we'll do is we'll just power that up because that is all configured as we've done already. Okay, so we've now got everything powered on. You can see we've got the OSD up in the corner. And what we're now going to do is send a command via the Express LRS Lua to change the channel, which should change the goggles and the VTX, meaning that everything is synced. And then you don't have to mess around changing the options on each one. So what we're going to do is select a new channel. So we're going to select channel three, scroll down to send to VTX. We'll wait a second. You'll hear a beep. You can see that the goggles changed and the VTX, which is located here. You can't quite see it, but it's behind the screen. It's followed. So it means now that we have that full control functionality simply via the Lua script. We don't have to mess around changing it independently on each device. And you can simply do it nice and easily on the screen on your radio, and then everything will sync up quickly and easily. Now, there are another two real nice features that I want to show you on Backpack. One of them is the fact that it will power up and change channel to whatever you've preset on the radio. What I mean by that is whatever you've left it on last, you can actually preset a channel on the radio. When the goggles power up, they will then switch to that automatically. Then when your VTX transmitter powers up, it will switch to that automatically as well, helping you avoid stepping over other users that you're flying around. So for instance, it is all currently set to channel one and I've powered it down. What I'm going to do before turning anything on is change that channel to channel six. I'm then going to send that via the backpack function. Nothing is turned on at this point though. We're going to leave that. We're then going to power on the HD zero goggles and we'll wait for them to connect. You'll see that come up in the top corner of the screen somewhere by there in a minute. It'll come up to the scan screen first. You'll hear a beep and then the backpack function will then switch channel. We'll just wait for that to kick in. There we go. The goggles is now on the screen and we'll just wait for it to then kick in that ESP32 and then it will switch channel. At this point, Nothing can affect any other user because the HD zero goggles don't transmit. There we go. You saw that the changed and it's now changed to the correct channel. And what I'm going to do now is reach over and power up my VTX. 
wait for that to boot and connect. You heard that it connected to the radio and boom, it's automatically changed channel straight onto the preset channel that I already had it onto. If I just demonstrate that one more time, so we'll leave it on this channel. I'm going to power down the VTX. We're going to power down the HD zero goggles. And then what I'll do is set this then instead down to channel two. We'll send that to the VTX. We'll then again, power up the HD zero goggles, wait for them to boot and then we'll power on the VTX. It should then synchronize and then jump down to channel two automatically for us. There we go, we're on the home screen. We'll allow them to connect. We should hear that beep again in a moment, which tells us that ESP32 is connected and communicated. There we go, the goggles have now changed. And then what we'll do is we'll power up our VTX allow the link to communicate. There we go. And boom, the channel is changed and connected straight away. Another nice little feature is the fact that you can control the DVR recording on the HD zero goggles from a switch on your radio. So if you go into backpack, I've pre-configured it at the moment to aux four down. And what you can see is if I set aux four down, which is this switch here, the recording icon appears in the top screen, which means we're recording on board the DVR. And then we can stop recording by putting it back up. It's just another nice little feature that they've included and it allows you to have more control over the HD zero system from your RC. Okay, so that is pretty much the setup process. Really, it's as simple as updating the firmware on the goggles, making sure your module's updated, link these two together, then configure your flight controller if your VTX is capable of MSP VTX, like all the HD Zero ones are, make sure that's configured and make sure you've got that Beta Flight 4.4, and then it should all simply work. Now, it really does offer some real nice functionality. As you've seen, you can not only change the channel, the band and the power on your radio to control your goggles and VTX, but you can also automatically tell them to go to the right channel on power up. So if you're flying with friends and you want to make sure that when you power up, it's not going to wipe them out, you can pre-configure it on your radio. And then when you power your goggles up and your VTX, it's going to simply jump to the correct channel. But you can even do that start and stop recording on the radio switch as well, allowing you to do that on your goggles. Now, it's going to be really interesting to see how this develops in the future with the dev team at Express LRS and the community with the HD Zero open source software. And I think we're going to see more and more functionality on this as well. Now, if you have found this video useful, please do make sure you are subscribed and please do consider checking out the links to Patreon and buy me a coffee in the description. It is only through the support of my patrons am I able to keep making content on this channel. I want to say a massive thank you from me to all of my patrons. And if you'd like to support us as well, please do consider checking it out. Furthermore, if you'd like to any questions answered, if you'd like to know more, put it in the comment section and I will try and answer them there as well. Please do stay safe and I will speak to you soon.